Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. Um, and if it's the first time you're passing through, please click on the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you like the content. Um, I talk about various, I talk about various subjects. So um, if you're looking for a particular um, specialty, that's not me. I just cover the gambit. Um, if I think something's of interest to the public, then I'll talk about it. Um, today I was um, wanted to talk about the quarter of a million pounds that the Home Office has paid for deportations on flights that haven't even left the runway. So they've paid out all this money to hire, I don't know if it's to hire planes or what that money is for, but I would imagine it's to hire the planes and then only to find out at the last minute or maybe weeks before, a couple of days before, that these planes can't take out off because they haven't played by the rules. You know, sometimes I think you can get away with doing illegal stuff or things that are not particular kosher if nobody's looking. But if something leaks out, you're going to get caught. So what is the point? I guess the point is, is that you've got rid of some. So they've got rid of some, um, illegal immigrants. I think it's um, a total of how many a year? Um, let me see if I can find where it says. That's typical. I should be more organized, but I'm not. Anyway, let me just say that every year over 12,000 migrants are forcibly yet removed from the country, 20,000 voluntary returns and 2,000 are put on the plane because of some criminal um, activity. Okay, so that's 12, 32, 34,000 a year leave the country. That's according to no deportations. So what's happening now is that the, the court has found that they are deporting people without giving them 72 days notice, without giving them time to get a lawyer, without giving them flight details so they can tell people on the other side, if there is anybody on the other side, that they're coming. And so these flights haven't taken off. So that's money down the drain. Our taxpayers' money, as usual, not being used effectively because they're not following the rules. They're just doing things hish-hash mishmash, whichever way you want to call it. They're just kind of doing their own thing. And a lot of people think that they're above the law, and you can be above the law to a certain extent. But then when you're found out, it's our money, public taxpayers' money, that has to foot the bill. And that's not right. Why don't you do things proper from the, from the get-go? The reason why I think is because you just want to get away with the protocol and you know if you follow protocol you're going to get thrown out because a lot of these deportations are illegal and so you know if you're going for um, just do it the correct route for Christ's sake you know if somebody's done jail time I mean you can do what I think it's one to four years but definitely over four years, you can get rid of people. You can deport them, no questions asked. But when you're deporting people for petty crimes, for driving offences, from cannabis and all that kind of stuff, and that's another thing that Pretty Patel was talking about. Oh, there's going to be a tougher stance on people getting caught with cannabis. I'm just like, get a life, why don't you? You know, it's legal in Sweden, it's legal nearly halfway around the world and that's what your preoccupation is. And why is the preoccupation on cannabis? Because they know it's mostly black people that smoke it. Mind you, there's a lot of white people that smoke it, but it's usually the black people that smoke it. So it's like the black man's drug. And whether you have like a little personal draw or whether you have, you know, too much, which gives them the impression that you might be trafficking it or selling it or being a drug dealer. It doesn't really matter. They're coming down tough on cannabis. Anyway, putting that aside, I'm going to give you a quick little read. And yeah, just so you've got all the stats. This is taken from The Guardian. 
the Home Office has spent a quarter of a million pounds on charter flights to deport people in the last three months without a single plane leaving the runway in that period. It's been revealed. About 12,000 migrants are forcibly removed from the UK each year, with another 20,000 removed through voluntary returns route. Approximately 2,000 of them are forcibly removed, are put on planes privately chartered by the Home Office. The government has used charter flights regularly since 2001, Remove it. Oh, another thing is that there was a hold off because you know that that mess up they made in February. So they suspended charter flights for three months. Uh, on the 11th of July, I believe, the ch they're on, they're back on. So you're going to start seeing charter flights, people being deported again. Okay, let me get back to this. Um, the government has used charter flights regularly since 2001, removing people to countries including Albania, Ghana, Nigeria and Pakistan. I wonder why Jamaica isn't in there. Anyway, after a pause following the Windrush scandal, charter flights to Jamaica controversially resumed in February this year. Between October 2016 and May 2018, more than 80 charter flights took off. According to research by Corporate Watch, Mighty has a 10-year, 524 million contract to provide security guards for home office flights. 524 million just for security flights. And that's a 10-year contract. So that's... I don't even want to do my math. So that's 500,000, 24 million. Anyway, you know me and my maths. <laughs> anyway, in March this year, the Home Office was forced to suspend the use of charter flights for the first time following the launch of a High Court challenge by Char Charity Medical Justice. The charity argued that the Home Office's policy of not informing people of exactly when they would be removed was unlawful because it failed to give people time to instruct lawyers and gather new evidence which might prevent their removal. High Court hearing about this case in March 2019, Mr Justice Walker issued an injunction ordering the Home Office to suspend its policy of removing migrants from the UK without adequate warning until the policy could be fully recovered by the court. He said, there appears to be grounds for real concern about access to justice. The injunction required the Home Office to give 72 hours and full flight details. A full hearing was held in June 2019 and judgment is awaited. So you see, you have a few little people who want to abide by the rules and you'll always have those who don't want to abide by the rules and who believe that rules are meant to be broken. And sadly, these people who believe rules are meant to be broken are often in position of power and unlikely to be challenged. So um, I don't know what's going to happen with this now. Um, when they're thinking about quarter of a million pounds just wasted, because they haven't followed protocol, that's a bit off. And I assume that these people are now back in detention centres, not knowing whether they're coming or going. They're not being released back to their families. They're not leaving the country. So they're just in detention centres taking up space. I mean, either you've got grounds to deport them or you haven't. And if you haven't, release them back to their families. That's all I've got to say. Have a good day, peeps. Bye-bye.